Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, this is Yamini Naidu and welcome to the Power of Storytelling video series. In this episode, we're going to look at how we can go from mastery to artistry as a storyteller. With lots of storytellers, a storyteller can be really messy, a storyteller can be mediocre, a storyteller can be masterful. And that's what the series is about. We're giving you all the techniques you need to become a masterful storyteller. But what's beyond mastery? It's artistry. It's where someone totally rocks their world. They rock the world of their customer. They're able to engage, connect, and inspire audiences. So here are my top techniques on moving from mastery to artistry. The first of these is to avoid roadblocks. So a roadblock is something in your story that becomes a speed hump. And when you have a roadblock or you have a speed hump in your story, what happens for your audience is they get stuck on the speed hump and they don't move through the story with you. I remember listening um, to somebody speaking recently at, a, at an event and she was telling us, she said, oh, I was rushing to the stores at five o'clock on a Friday to make it there before closing time. And in this particular context, in the city of Melbourne, the audience was thinking, hmm, Friday night is late night shopping. So that small detail became a roadblock for her audience. So what are some things we need to be aware of so we don't have roadblocks in our stories? The first is you've got to make sure all the detail is correct. Surprisingly, correct detail creates artistry because incorrect detail creates a speed hub. So we had someone start a story and they went at the 2000 Athens Olympics. And in Australia, if there's one date we know, we know Sydney had the Olympics in 2000. What happens when you make a mistake like that? You lose credibility and your audience is thinking, what else have you got wrong? So you definitely don't want that. So incorrect details. Sometimes there might be an element in our story that's completely true, but it seems so wild that your audience can't believe it. So what do you do then? So I'm going to share an example for what one of my clients did. So she was sharing a story about one of her engineers out in Tasmania who received a call from the customer. And this engineer jumped in his car, raced over to the customer's side, but his road, the road was blocked by a fallen tree. The engineer whipped out of his car, went to his boot, took out a chainsaw and just quickly sawed down the tree and proceeded on his way to the customer. So it was a story of customer service. But what happened to you when I came to the part where I said, he opened his boot, took out a chainsaw. Everyone's thinking, who on earth carries a chainsaw in their boot? Now, as you saw that part, you know, the chainsaw in the boot, sawing the tree down was very critical to the story. But for most urban audiences, this is going to be a huge roadblock because they're going to think, hey, is this the chainsaw ma you know, murderer or massacre? Uh, so this is what my client did because that element was so important in the story, yet it was a roadblock. So she decided to use a little humor about it. So she, when she came to the part where she said, he opened his boot, took out his chainsaw, only in Tasmania. Now people who know Australia know Tasmania, know that a lot of people in Tasmania do carry a chainsaw and they do have a license to use it. So if you've got a detail that defies imagination, Make sure you accommodate your audience. So use humor or acknowledge that that detail is so wild, but it's important to your story. So for example, you know, a client might want to share a story about his spouse who had been through cancer. Now that's a very sensitive subject because there'll be people in the room who have friends, family, or they themselves might have been affected or know someone who has. So when you're dealing with a sensitive subject, it might bring up um, emotion of, in your audience that you may not want in the room or that may not be appropriate. In this particular instance, when my client was sharing the story, because it was very powerful, it mattered for that audience and it had a purpose. 
So he's, he talked about the time when his wife was diagnosed with cancer. But so that it didn't become, the word cancer didn't become a roadblock in his story. He subverted one of my rules and he said, I'm happy to say she's fine now. So he did that right at the beginning of his story. So then the audience could relax and they knew that she was okay, he was okay, and they could move through the story with them. So sometimes when we have to use a sensitive subject, it's again how we do this well, how we honor the audience in the room. And the sensitive subject itself doesn't become a roadblock. One of my other clients shared a story about his daughter being diagnosed with anorexia. So he said, five years ago, my daughter was diagnosed with anorexia. I'm happy to say today she's a healthy young woman, but I do remember that time five years ago when, and he shared that story. Just that simple sentence of saying, I'm happy to say today she's a healthy young woman, again, allows your audience to move through the story with you. So these are some tips on how we can move from mastery to artistry. And the first critical thing we do is we avoid roadblocks. The other element around a roadblock can be, you know, cultural cringes when there's something in your story that's inappropriate. I'm going to be totally didactic about it this time. I'm going to say, no sex, politics, sport, or religion in your story. Come on, you can do better. So if you want to succeed in business using stories, remember that. No sex, politics, religion, or sport. I know I'm being really harsh. But this is about moving from, you know, mastery to artistry. And I've given you, we've covered so much rich material in the public domain, professional domain, personal domain. And you'll find that you really engage audiences, you really connect with diverse groups by staying away from topics like that, that unless handled, you know, by a professional comedian can really, can really misfire. So those are the roadblocks to avoid. So what's our next strategy for moving from mastery to artistry? I've talked about this before and I'm going to keep on coming back to it. You have to use humor. To rock it as a storyteller, you have to use humor. I'm going to share a story that Benjamin Zander, who's one of my favorite, uh, favorite TED, talk, talk, uh, TED talkers, TED talking, uh, shared at the start of his TED talk. So this is what he shared. Two salesmen were sent off into Africa to look at the opportunity to sell shoes. The so two salesmen from Manchester. The first salesman sends a telex back saying, situation hopeless, nobody wears shoes. And the second salesman sends a telex back saying, opportunity endless, nobody wears shoes. Benjamin Zander then uses that story to land his message, to say this is the same thing that's happening with classical music. Some people think it's dying, but I think it's thriving. When you watch that TED talk, and I invite you to do that, you should see the audience. They, they laugh, they connect, they engage, they're absolutely eating out of the palm of his hand. So humor can do that for you. It can do that for you uh, as a storyteller. So how do we then use humor in our story? Sometimes our uh, stories can be quite serious, you know, um, like the client who had a spouse go through illness. Even the Vidran Smalovic story that I shared in the previous episode, that's quite a serious story. But every story has an element where you can bring in an element of lightness. You can have just one funny line. So I'm not saying a story has to be funny from the word go to the word, you know, to the very end. Sometimes it can be that, and if that's your natural stick, that can work. But uh, even the darkest, most serious story can always even have just one line in it that lifts it. So where would you be funny in a really dark, serious story? I'm going to challenge you and say go to the darkest element, because that's when your audience is really down, they're feeling really low, they're right there in the story with you. They, they're getting very tense, and that's when you need to release it with a bit of humor. So if you go to your darkest element, and then you think, what is something I can do there that would lift my audience? So in the Vidran Smalovic story that I shared in the previous episode on storytelling success secrets, I talk about Vidran Smalovic sitting 
it, you know, amidst the rubble of war-torn Sarajevo, sitting on his plastic stool, playing, playing his cello, bullets whizzing around his head. It's, it's a bomb, it's a war zone. And that's such a dark part of the story. And then I lifted by saying, I realized I too had something very small in common with Vidran. My house too can resemble a bomb site in the morning. Now, it might not sound like much in this context, but when I do use these stories live, the room explodes because people want to release that tension from being in a dark place. So even this most serious, darkest story can benefit with an element of humor, even just one line. But for me, humor is also looking like you enjoy telling your story. Come on, own it. You've done the work, you've practiced, you know what you're doing. So go up there and look like you're having fun. That can really elevate, elevate the room. So you can't hope to use humor in your story when you don't bring that energy yourself. You know, when you're traveling, uh, when you're flying, one of the safety instructions is if oxygen masks drop down, make sure you put on your oxygen mask first before you help anybody else. And I think the same thing applies with humor. So you can't make an audience laugh. You can't have a funny line in your story if you yourself are not radiating that, if you're not lifting, you're not looking energetic, you're not looking like this, you know, you've got a twinkle in your eye, a smile on your face. So all of these things really help us make our stories funny. With using humor with our stories, laughter is the best medicine. And when your audiences laugh and you laugh. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.